We're looking for the best traveler's camera available, and the new ZS200 may do it, but is it that much better than the LX100 it replaces, or the FZ1000 with its fantastic zoom? Let's have a good close look up at that island out there. What do we see? Holy smokes, there's a lighthouse on it. And now using digital zoom, there's a flag. And a, and a stabilized digital zoom, it's pretty incredible. Just remind us where we came from on that shot there. So that's pretty cool. Is it really pocket sized? Well, let's uh, pull that out of my pocket here and have a look. Indeed. Well, what? how does it compare to the LX100 then? Is it that much better? And how about the FZ1000 for really good photos? Well, there's a lot of things that they'll have in common. They all share the deep menu logic that Panasonic has developed for the whole series. 4K video, of course, with its great single frames that you can pull out. Manual overrides, essential for control of shutter speeds and f-stops. Optical image, image stabilization, totally necessary for those big zooms. Remote app is handy to have on your phone to control the camera functions. Filters and effects, some of them are good, some of them are a waste of time. And we'll have a look at those later. What kind of things, though, do these cameras now differentiate themselves from? Well, f 7000 is big, more like a DSLR. And the LX100 was still was pretty tough to jam in your pocket. Zooms, well, the 200 is getting pretty close to its big brother uh, at 400. Image sizes, both have great 20 megapixel images. The LX100, not so much with the 13 megapixel. And those one inch sensors are great for gathering light at night. We'll have a look at that later too. The zoom f-stop, yeah, the SZ200, a little bit limited. Uh, that's kind of a narrow range. And uh, the LX100 was great, covered in dials that you could access quickly. Yeah, ZS200, it's got touchscreen. We'll see how well that works. So, so far, there's uh, something starting to differentiate themselves here. Let's see if it's enough to make us want to change over from the LX100 to the ZS200 as our travel camera. Okay, let's have a look at that size. Well, FZ1000 is a big camera, bridge camera they call it, DSLR, uh, not quite. It has one nice thing though, it has the reticulating screen which rotates, goes forward and backwards, great for uh, low shots, selfie shots, um, difficult shots over crowds or into the sun. ZS200, great touch screen, very sensitive. Size, when you zoom out, you start to appreciate how long that zoom is on the ZS200. By the, time you, by the time you take the lens cap off the LX100 and zoom it out, it's still kind of a bulky camera, you know. It uh, has a, I have a filter on the front of it as well. ZS200, when you see it out at full zoom, well, it's almost the size of the FZ1000, so it's it's pretty good size. That uh, FZ1000 has got its lens hood on too, and we'll have a look at that in a second. That's a nice thing to have, by the way. Keeps the sun from... Uh, uh, crossing the lens and giving you those reflections. Well, the LX100 on the left is a pretty big camera. It's got that viewfinder uh, eye, rubber eye cap and it sticks out of the front with the lens and the lens cap and the filter. They're pretty much the same from the front. That lens cap though, uh, tends to blow around in the wind and make some video sound if it bangs. By the time the ZS2000 or 200 is, is extended, you see how big it is. 200 has also got a built-in flash. Well, that can be handy. I'm not a big fan of flashes, but I suppose there's a place for it. See the, number, the lack of dials on the front. These dials are really nice on the LX100. Here's a hot shoe that you can put a flash on. But you can see the controls are on the LX100. You can control aperture, shutter speed, and then adjust the exposure balance very quickly right on the camera itself. So you don't have to go into all those menus. The ZS200 zoom though, it's a big one and it's pretty much the same physical zoom as the uh, FX1000, so FZ1000, getting all mixed up here. One thing though, you'll notice that there's a filter on that Lumix on the right, that's the FZ1000. You can put a polarizer, you can put an ND, you can put a UV filter on there, you can protect the lens. I've got one here on the LX100 as well. Uh, I've gone to, uh, you know, polarizing filters on that. Pretty handy to protect it. Not so much on the new ZS200. It's naked. It has its own built-in lens cap. Yeah, that's okay. 
but it's not threaded and you that is an exposed lens so uh, no lens hood and no filter at this time or ND filter touchscreen TV on the back is uh, screen is very nice gives you quick access to the functions the quality is superb and it really is the way to go touch for app for uh, exposure or focus it's great okay we're going to get kind of old school here and look at some actual lens charts so i'm going to uh, zoom out fully on the FZ1000. We're going to look at that little corner piece, uh, usually where the most distortion is on the corners, and this is at its full extended 400 millimeter telephoto. If we compare that against the LX100, it's a little tiny 75 millimeter, pretty close. You don't see much difference going on in there, as in I would not expect that. Put the new 200 on, again we compare the bottom. If we drag that across, yes, definite bit of softness on that um, comparison there so not quite the same quality of glass as there is on the FZ1000. No big surprise. Let's look at its um, light gathering. If you take a, as evening falls here and we're getting into uh, ISO 800. Um, so far so good. Great light gathering on the FZ1000, that big one inch CMOS sensor. Um, no problems with that. Uh, it does great 4K video as well as 1080p and of course the um, photos. Look at the 200, same thing, not a problem. If we go up to 1600, starting to push the ISO on these uh, cameras here. The LX100, uh, 1600, not really a problem. It's got a you know that wide gathering in there. It's quite nice. ZS200, let's have a look right in that dome and see how the quality is. Well, the FZ1000 is fantastic. Crisp, clear, high quality lens, great definition. Third 200, now we start seeing noise showing up. LX100, a little bit blurry. You know, that telephoto is not that good. Um, ZS200, pretty good. Telephoto is working well and not so much noise in there. FZ1000, it's fantastic. Great quality. Let's compare that against the 200. Yeah. You can immediately see the softness in the 200, and these are both tripod mounted so that there wouldn't be any uh, difference in sharpness. Okay, give it a slight tip towards the FZ1000, but it's so big. And yeah, ZS200 is doing pretty good. If we blow that up to uh, start looking at some of the detail in the sky, which is often where noise is, you can start to see chatter in here. I'm not sure if it's res resolvable on YouTube videos, but it's in there, so I wouldn't want to go much higher than 3200. ZS200 has some interesting shots. They have a creative night mode. They have a monochrome shot. These are things that you may want to try, but they're kind of like filters. Um, this is a 30 second time exposure. Again, it sort of handles the broad range of uh, lighting quite well. Depth of field, big issue, especially when you're dealing with these small f-stops. LX100, wonderful camera. Wide angle, f2.4. You can see how it blurs up the background nicely. The 1000, same thing, f2.8, it does a pretty good job of it. The 200, eh, a lot of detail in there, it's wide setting at 3.3. If you go to the X100 and the tele setting, 2.8, you see it blurs out the background pretty nicely. And same with the uh, FZ1000, uh, no background whatsoever. But the SZ200, if we go to telephoto, even at 6.4, we can see it can blur out the background. So there is a way of controlling depth of field. Not having that uh, lens shade though really does uh, give you some problems. The LX100, uh, I did have a filter on there. You see some some sun, some reflections. FZ1000, not so bad. The uh, ZS200, yeah, you're getting some wash out and some some re internal reflections. So, gotta watch that backlighting. Without the ability for a lens hood on that lens, it's going to be a problem. What about some of the built-in functions? Let's have a look at those. Well, the FZ1000 has got a hot mic plug-in, which is great. That means that you can get boom mics, all that's great. However, on the LX100 and the ZS200, it's crap. You've got the wind noise canceller buttons, but no, it doesn't work so well. Okay, let's give up on that. Let's have a look at slow motion then. 1080p, 120 frames per second is the best you can do on the FZ1000. It's pretty nice. And the ZS200, pretty much identical. Uh, they both have uh, great quality slow motion. LX100 doesn't have anything. So we we'll watch that helicopter coming in. And in the FZ1000, pretty good. We close in there, we see it's kind of chattery. That 1080p is not, doesn't seem to be quite as high resolution. 
Um, it's almost exactly the same on the ZS200. A little bit softer, uh, not quite as sharp on the uh, resolution. If I take another shot here, you'll see it on the prop. FZ1000, you see the great prop resolution coming in on that blow up of that little detailed section. If we look at the uh, ZS200, same prop, not quite so resolution. So maybe it's the lens, maybe it's the um, processing, hard to say. Just for fun, I thought I'd compare the iPhone success, 180p, uh, pretty, looks pretty good. ZS200, eh, pretty much identical. So yeah, just for the average knockoff slow mo, iPhone's good enough. And there's some other things in here. Time lapse is great. It's the Alex 100 and the ZS200 are the same thing. With the ZS, you can quickly access the back touch screen, which really makes it easy to set up the shot. Pick your interval, start it going, off you go. You don't have to do all the menu dumpster diving that you have to do on the LX100. And the time uh, lapse feature, uh, time exposure is wonderful on these things here. And you can very quickly create the videos and uh, upload them to your phone. It has both Bluetooth and Wi-Fi so that uh, you can quickly uh, share that. Let's have a look at one of these little videos here then. This is on the LX100, oh, sorry, ZS200, and uh, shows a nice uh, moonscape going up. And uh, another one here, some clouds going by. Tripod mount is necessary, really, to get the best picture. Well, it's all about the zoom. So let's have a look at that zoom. This is the wide angle shot. Starting here with the LX100, this is what you get out of the box with your camera. And you take a big wide shot on the FZ1000, uh, a little bit wider and zoom in on optical 400 millimeters nice view of that lighthouse and then we use the digital 600 and we close right in on that on that uh, lighthouse okay 200 wide shot in on the digit on the optical zoom that's now handheld so the stabilization is important and now the digital zoom kicks in it's actually remarkably good for digital zoom let's compare it against the fz1000 that's the fz1000 image if we throw the 200 on top of that and then we split the image in half and compare them yes the 1000 is better but not a ton better but a better better shot but hey it's also like twice as big so 4k is fantastic here's a, a video we can pull that single frame of that lightning flash out and it makes a fantastic picture and this is the whole bit or stealth mode LX100, it's a pretty quiet little camera, it's small. You can, I wore this in the spot, you're never supposed to take pictures. No daddy, pretty nice. And even with those little tiny microphones on the camera, it's not bad sound. Backlighting, even again, without the sunshade and all that, they seem to uh, handle the backlighting and exposure pretty nicely. And optical stabilization works very well. We have a very steady shot here. And uh, even though this is at its full uh, telephoto extended range, and I'm hand holding it. So when I like to travel, I like to have a little pouch with on my camera strap. I like to carry an extra battery in it in case I run out. I like to carry a, an extra SD card in case I run out. I like to have a lens wipe because we do have that exposed lens. And um, these are a great little traveling camera. People underestimate the power of these things because they think they're just a little handheld camera, but this one is, seems to be almost the quality of the SV, FZ1000. So, what kind of decision to make on this? Well, uh, number one, it fits in your pocket. It is a true pocket camera. It is almost as fantastic a zoom of, as the SV1000, not quite as sharp. It produces fantastic 4K photos and it's built around the 4K function. The logic control is not quite as nice as the LX100. However, it does access that touch screen really fast, and you can get a lot of things on it, and it's got some very interesting features, which I haven't mentioned. So overall, yeah, it's a fantastic little unit. And um, yeah, traveling is expensive, and you want to have a good camera, especially if you're only going carry on these days. So thanks for watching, and I hope this helps you make your choice. See you later.